Are you in the market for a wireless battery powered camera with a starlight sensor for colored low light video and a home base to securely save all of those clips that the camera's taking? Well, then you're in the right place. Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the TP-Link Tapo C420 S2. That S2 is because, well, this camera comes in a box set of two. I have one camera here in front of me and the other one is still implemented outside uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing, recording and keeping tabs on my yard for my case. I will start this review off by prefacing that TP-Link did reach out to me and provide me the C420 S2 for the purposes of doing a review. Camera itself is only part of the actual hardware that you get with the, Ace, the 420 S2. I mentioned that there is an included base station and this might not be a base station that you are familiar with. You picture bigger, bulkier things. This is a ridiculously small base station at only 2.8 by 2.8 by 1.2 inches. That means it can fit just about anywhere. Over here on the side, we have a sync button. On the other side, there isn't anything to look at. On the top, you'll notice that there is a speaker there because this can send you notifications or sounds right through there. There is an LED status light right there. And if we flip this over, nothing really to look at except a couple rubber feeties that keep it off of whatever surface you happen to have it on. I will say, having this on for lengthy periods of time, I've had other small hubs like this and they tend to get rather warm. The Tapo little base station here does a remarkable job at staying cool. On the back of the device here, you'll notice that you have your designated power port, your ethernet cable port, a reset button, and a micro SD card slot. That's another thing. This can have up to a 256 gigabyte SD card. That is amazing considering that the C420 here is not the only camera in the Tapo lineup that can communicate with this base station. So if you're building out your Tapo camera line, this is a valuable piece of hardware. Coming back to our micro SD card. Unlike some other manufacturers, this SD card is not encrypted. That is a plus and a minus. The plus being, it's, if it's located in your house and the camera goes missing or problems happen, you can pop the SD card out and still view your file footage. Unlike other manufacturers where that's encrypted and you can only view them through the application. Pop that out, put it in your computer, you're good to go. There also is this ethernet cable. The beauty and via firmware, magic things can happen after setup, which requires you to wire it to your access point, after which you can use this wirelessly over Wi-Fi, which will allow you to move it closer to the camera's location, giving you better coverage and doesn't have this locked into a single place. I really like that. And again, the magic of firmware. Bringing our camera back into focus. The camera itself is stated as being weather rated. However, TP-Link does not give you a actual IP rating anywhere on their website. I tried to find it, couldn't. Several other reviewers I saw had similar statements. It's not a concern because we're, when we get to the back, you'll see that there is weather protection. I just wish that it was actually stated that it was weather rated. Operation temperature is between negative four and 113 degrees and between 10% and 90% humidity. I have had this, not this one, the other one. Outside in about up to 90 degree weather, it's been rained on, it has survived perfectly well, it's an outdoor camera. It's doing what it's meant to do. The camera itself is 4.35 inches by 2.52, by 2.52, it's it's a cylinder. Actually, it kind of reminds me of a beverage can in its uh, overall size. It is a unique camera shape as far as everything that I have ever tested. The camera itself does operate only over 2.4 gigahertz. It is not a five gigahertz camera, meaning longer distances, less speed. But even with the 2K with this, you'll be okay as long as you have it closer to your house. And I'll talk about that a little later. Let's focus in on the front of the camera. Up here, we have our camera lens. There is a little, channel around it to help divert water from the lens itself. The image sensor for that lens is a one over three, and this gives us that 2K QHD 2560 by 1440 image ratio. The lens itself has a 113 degree field of view. And as we start coming down, we also have LEDs on the side here, as well as two 850 nanometer IR lights, which will help the camera see, when it's in night vision mode, up to 49 feet away from the camera. There also is a status light indicator on the front, a mic, and then a ambient light sensor. Right here, this is your PIR sensor. That is going to be your heat-based motion sensor. That is how a battery-powered camera works. It needs heat and motion before it triggers. If we come to the underside right here. This is where our speaker is located and our first mounting position. Yes, you can mount this underneath, not just in the back. 
Notice there, there is another mounting option right there. And if we're talking about the back, there also is this little door right here, acts as a pass-through for some cableage. And if we unscrew the back, open it thusly, you'll see right there, that's a little bit of weather stripping to help keep this watertight because in the back, you will have a battery. And I have the extra battery right here off camera, which slides right into there. So if you happen to use the pass-through, you can actually plug directly into the battery and use this as a wired connection of sorts. If we kind of take a look down in there, there's a deep channel for the battery to sit in. There is your sync slash reset button right there. And then as I mentioned before, there is weather stripping on this. You can see flare right there, how far this actually sits in there to protect it from weather. And to lock it into place, you just follow the lines and then click to lock. Now you did see me pull a battery off camera. There are other things that you get in the box with this. So let's take a quick look at what else you get in the box. For starters, you will get a set of two battery packs, one for each camera. You can purchase more of these through the Tapo store. You also saw that you get base station, you also get a power peripheral for this, currently still plugged in, a wall wart so that you can charge cameras as well as a cable for that. You have two of these mounting peripherals. It is mostly plastic. However, the ball joint here is metal, allowing you some flexibility for mounting options. And if I tighten that down, you have your screw here, which you can tighten down to, to the back or underside of the camera. We also get mounting screws and anchors, a set of six so that you can mount both the cameras and then there is, and it might be a little difficult to see, but there is a reset pin. And aside from a few other cableages, that's everything that you get in the box aside from the cameras themselves. Remember, you get two. Two, bat two batteries, two cameras, one base station, two mounting peripherals. Even though Tapo is a subsidiary under TP-Link, Tapo cameras do not use the Casa app. And that is most noticeable during setup. You need a specific app to actually set this up. So let's take a quick look at what setup process was like for the C420S2 here. This is setup of the Tapo C420S2. There's a lot of stuff on the table here. Like the ethernet cable is connected to a Wi-Fi modem over there because the hub right here needs to be powered on and connected to ethernet in order to connect, in order to connect itself to the camera itself. I have it sitting on one of the pods right now. The other thing is, the batteries for the camera do not come fully charged, so you will need to charge these before you can actually get things started. First, charge your battery, get your connection points together, and that puts it in place. Now there is a reset and sync button in here, so we're actually going to just gently place the back right there. Actually, we'll just let it fall off, and then we are going to open the Tapo app and press the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner, and then we're going to figure out which camera we are setting up. And right here is the C420. In our case, the S2 indicates that we got the bundle package, so we're gonna select that. Right here, we need to set the hub up, so we're gonna say hub. Uh, we have not added this to power or the Wi-Fi yet, so that's what we're gonna do. First things first, we're gonna connect it to Ethernet. This way we get things started right away. Also, I do have a micro SD card in the back there already. And then we're just going to take our power cable and place it in the back. Now, right now it is showing red right there. And we are supposed to wait until it flashes amber according to the application. So we'll give that a moment to do what it needs to do in order to start flashing amber. And just as I've learned in the past with other hub devices like this, can't use mesh networking, has to be attached to the actual main hub. So we're gonna go do that. Once you properly connect the Tapo hub, it starts flashing amber, and then you see the screen that says, looking for device. So it found it. This is the screen that came up. It wants me to name it. I select next. I'm gonna leave it at that name. Where is this device placed? Well, it says garage. It's not in the garage. I'll say it's in the living room. Next. And we can pick an icon for it. I'm gonna leave it as a thing that looks like the Tapo Hub. And now it's configuring. There is a firmware that needs to be updated for it. So we're gonna allow that to happen. Once firmware is up to date, you'll get this screen so we can pair another device or done for now. Well, we need to actually pair our camera. So we're going to select pair another device and these are the cameras that we can add. Now, I took the battery out the back here, but if I tap it in, it will start flashing red and green, letting us know that it's in place. Now the battery doesn't slide as much as I thought it would, so that's good. We are going to select our Tapo C420 
20 and it's letting us know unscrew put the battery in oh and then it wants us to lock it back up so batteries in there I guess we're not going to have to press the sync button so we're just going to lock that in place so it is now locked we will select next we see that it is flashing so it's already flashing so right now it is describing the Mac address for this and how do I find the Mac address so I am going to select that yes this is the Mac address and it is going to try and pair this camera with the base station now the base station is downstairs so I'm curious to see how well this will actually connect but one would hope if it's going to be outside and talking to the base station that this is no problem all right there we go it connected and I'm just going to call this oh yep there's the Alex a commands where is this going to be garage living room or custom we'll say custom and it's gonna be in my backyard and then we can pick a picture for it in this case I'm just gonna do the icon and select next and congratulations we're all done so we can add another device select next or done I'm going to select next to see what happens all right so we've got the option for a tapo care 30-day free trial we are going to skip that for the time being and it's letting us know we can always go back and do it if we want. I'm gonna say, got it. Next, it says load up the SD card, which we already did. Uh, it does take up to a 256 gig card, which is great because this set has two cameras. Uh, we're gonna say, got it. Now we can done for now or mount the wall. And if we mount the wall, it's gonna walk us through the directions about how to do this. So fully charge everything, placement, test the Wi-Fi signal, which is going to give us a live feed from that once it connects, there you go. So we're just gonna say next, talking about optional placements for that. And I'm just gonna say, yep, it's on a table because that's where it is. We have the ability to invert an image if we wanted to, so here it is talking to the camera again. I'm just gonna say this angle is good so we don't have to wait through this and select finish and there we go. And we will select back and that completes the setup of both the hub and the, the Tapo C420. As far as setups go with the inclusion of a base station, it is not terrible, you always do have to set the base station up first before you set the cameras up. One thing that I constantly concern myself with is power usage of anything that I plug into my home. Well, I'm happy to say that, as you might imagine, this is battery powered. You don't have to worry about power usage. However, I can say that the batteries that are included with this are a 5200 milliamp battery and from start to finish will take you about two and a half hours to charge and based on Tapo, you could expect to get up to 180 days of runtime with normal usage. I've had mine out there for about a month and a half right now, and I'm just getting down to 46%, and it's triggered fairly regularly. The beauty of the replaceable battery, though, is if you have your camera mounted in a location that you can get to, if you've got an extra one, you can simply swap out the battery and put in the new one while this one's charging, your camera is still fully functional. The hub itself, while you can make it wireless for receiving, it is it always must remain plugged in to a power source for it to actually be utilized. I will say the hub itself uses 1.6 watts of power. And again, as far as base stations are concerned for what this can do, that is a reasonable amount of power for this to actually be utilizing. An application can make or break that company service. There's a lot you can do for free in the Tapo app while still having the option for a paid tier, which does not break the camera's functionality in any way, shape, or form if you choose not to do it. So let's take a look at what you can do with the Tapo app. The Tapo C24S requires the use of a hub. So as you might imagine, there actually is app controls for the hub. Right there, you can see a bell icon. If I select that, well, guess what? It is now ringing the hub. So if you have the hub located, somewhere where you wanna get somebody's attention, that's how you can do it. If I tap on the icon, that's going to bring me into the hub itself. Notice it has a location right there. Again, select the ring icon right there. That's, that is going to ring the hub. I can select underneath that doorbell ring. Well, here we go. Custom sounds, you've got lots that you can choose from, and then how loud you would like that to be. Then you have siren duration. So five seconds to 10 minutes, or customize how long you'd like that to be. All of that is done just by clicking that. Explore smart action. So this will allow you to set up, hey, if this does something, tell this to do it. So right here you can see, if detects motion, set an alarm off. If door opens, set an alarm off. So that's one of the good things about the hub itself. It's not just meant to be a place to store your videos. It 
integrates into the Tapo smart devices universe. If I select this, it will show me my paired devices. I could select add and it will allow me to add other devices. Here it lists out everything. I only have the cameras, so I'm not going to be adding anything else. That is everything that we can do for the controls. But up in the upper right hand corner, we have a sprocket. We select that. Now we get into the settings. Right up here, if I select this, it will allow me to change the device icon. Moving down, we would select this to change the device's name. Other information is in there, such as MAC address and firmware. I'm not gonna show that. Here we have location. We can select one of the presets or do a custom one. Network connection. Right now, it is connected via ethernet, but once you set it up, you do not have to leave it on ethernet. You can connect it via Wi-Fi. This is a great feature, especially if you want your hub to be somewhere that is not right next to your Wi-Fi access point. So you could go here and that will allow you to set it up for wireless use. And then you can put it wherever you want, as long as you have power. Here we have our sirens. Just another location to access those. We have our LED status light, so we can turn that on or off if you have this in an area that you'd like to keep dark. Device info, another place to see firmware, MAC address, serial number, not going to show you. Here we have our firmware. I can select check for firmware, but notice right here, auto update. If we select this, we can specify a time frame for this to check for updates so that it doesn't disturb the rest of our smart home environment. Or if we're binge watching something on Netflix, we don't have to worry about this downloading a firmware update because we've set it up so that it'll do that off cycle when we're not inconvenienced. Here we have diagnostics. Well, I have that off. If you have that on, it will allow the hub to gather some data and send it to your app so that it can be sent over to Tapo. And right down here, we have auto reboot. Well, some Sometimes you kind of need to auto reboot devices. I haven't had that experience with uh, any of my Tapo stuff, but if you wanted to set up a schedule for auto rebooting, you come right there, you could set it up. You have the option to reboot right now or remove from your Tapo app. And that is everything that you can do for the Tapo hub. So let's move on to what we can do for the Tapo C420S. Starting on our home page right here, upper left hand corner, you'll notice I have a toggle for home. If I had multiple homes, I can set which one I wanted to look at right there. Over on the right hand side, you'll see an envelope with a red dot. Well, that red dot means that there is a notification that I need to look at or address. Here we can see right here, my Tapo C420S has a notification as well as my C325WB. But we're gonna tap on our notification right here. And here we could see what was detected and at what time time and days. So we could scroll through this and see all the days. Red dot indicates that it is something that you have not yet looked at. Opening it up will bring us to our timeline here. And here it thinks the bird is a person. The detection settings while not perfect, will give you a general idea. Upper right hand corner here, we have a pencil. We can kind of come in here and say, mark as red or delete just by selecting them. But we're going to come back to our main page here. And right here we could see all of our other Tapo cameras listed on our homepage. Right now, I'm going to select my Tapo C420S. You can see right there in the upper right hand corner of that card, there actually is a battery indicator letting me know how much life is left because this is a battery operated camera. And notice right here, there is a firmware update. So if there is a firmware that you have not yet updated to, it'll give you this splash screen. After an update has been performed, if you need it, you are brought to this. This is the main screen for the camera. Here in the top corner here, we could see auto 2K UHD. I could select that and change it to 720 if I want to force it to always be 720, which is their data saver, but it's still considered HD or auto, which will switch between the two depending on bandwidth. Here we have auto for day mode and night mode, meaning it will switch to its night vision depending on time of day and ambient lighting. You can force it to go into night mode as I'm going to do right now if you wanted to. And here you can see it turns on the IR lights and puts on the night filter, but recommended that you leave that in auto. We'll give that a moment to change back. Here we have the LEDs. Notice I can turn that on or off. You can't see them right now because it's daylight. I'm going to toggle that off. Next to that, we have a sprocket icon. That is actually the settings or configuration for the camera. We'll talk about that a little later. Right on our screen itself, we do have a percent battery letting us know just how much power this particular camera has left. Now, if we come over here to the grid icon right here, selecting this will allow us to pick other Tapo branded cameras and add them to a grid of live cameras. So right now I have this one here and I'm going to say okay. So now I will see both the C420S and my C325WB in tandem. You could do four per page and have up to eight pages and I'm going to tap on that. It's going to bring me back to the 
single camera per view. Uh, notice I'm on 13 of 32, and this is, again, something that I wish Tapo would correct. Bring me back to the first camera. Don't make me scroll through everything. Now that we are back on our live camera here, right next to the grid icon, we have our snapshot. Doing this will allow me to take a snapshot, a picture of what it's seeing in real time. Selecting the movie camera next to that will actually allow me to take a live video. So I am recording what it is seeing right now, and that is getting saved to my memories location right down there, which we'll discuss a little later. Moving on, we have our audio indicator right there. You can see this is for the camera's microphone. I have it maxed up. The yellow is kind of past what it recommends. So right back there is about what it recommends you should have it set at. I always like kind of bumping it up. Makes it a little more prevalent that I can hear things on the other end. Right here, if we tap on this, this will expand our camera into full screen mode. And then once we are in full screen mode, notice that we still have information accessible to us. Battery percentage, the ability to take a snapshot, do a video recording from here. But now we have the mic and telephone icons on our video itself. We also have the ability to bring up the grid, volume, turn on, turn on and off the light, auto quality, auto daylight night, and then auto for the quality. And then we could swipe through if we have multiple cameras. And there you can see I left my one camera as part of the list. Now, if I bring it back like that, it can be adjusted to full screen mode also using the gyroscope within your smartphone itself. So you can use that or just tilt your phone. Coming down to our white area, this is our talk. Selecting talk, if I press and hold, now the people outside will be hearing my voice through the camera. Take your finger off, they're no longer hearing you. On this page, if we select the slider icons, this will allow you to adjust individually specifics for this. So we can adjust the camera's microphone from here and the speaker on the camera itself. Let's say it's coming in a little garbly and we want to adjust that for the people listening on the other side. This is how we can do that. Selecting the down arrow or down carrot right there will collapse the menu that we were in and we can go over to the next one. So here we have our call. Now, right now, in real time, audio is being sent out to the camera. I have to hang up if I want to end this call. I can mute the microphone or I can mute the speaker. Those are going to be on my side to help avoid feedback. Again, selecting those sliders will allow me to adjust specifics for this talk session. Always remember, hang up your talk session when you are done or else that will remain live. Now, the difference between talk and the call is I have to actuate and hold down the microphone in order for the other per party to hear me. Voice call, it stays on until I click that button off. Here we have privacy mode. This is a great feature that Tapo offers at no extra charge. You notice right here, video feed is turned off. It will not record anything. It will not sense motion. It will not send you any information. If I swipe over to my other camera right here, that one's still on. C420S, can't do anything. I select exit privacy mode and that will turn the live feed on for the camera, meaning I can visually look through it now and it will start recording again. Here we have our alarm, selecting that right now outside. People are hitting me because there's an alarm going going off. That is how you would toggle that. In sequence, we have our Tapo Care. This is the Tapo extras that you can get for your camera. So right here you can see you have unlimited cloud storage for 30 days, exclusive AI detection, rich notifications, which we're going to talk about a little later because the notifications that you get will be purely text-based unless you get this, which will then allow you to have a snapshot of what was seen. And then smart sort allow you to kind of classify things in your recordings a little easier. Here we have the monthly prices if you're interested and if you do yearly, you save a little bit. Tapo subscription is not necessary to use this camera, but it is there and prevalent on several screen so I wanted to point that out to you so you knew what it was and there we go that is a example of a non rich notification purely text-based now we move on to playback and memories and this is an area that I feel Tapo could improve not this area right here this is great notice I have a bunch of hits right here person 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 not all of them are a person here this is a person this is me walking through my backyard we'll pause that and then if we wanted to we can adjust tapping there to select on a camera if I scrub in and this is a little tricky to do around a camera but if I scrub in on my timeline, you could see green line that indicates, hey, I caught something. In this case, it was a person. If it was motion, it would be orange. I like this feature. Remember, this particular camera is a battery based, so it does hibernate itself and use a PIR sensor. So it needs motion and heat in order for it to trigger. That's how you get the longer life out of the battery. So that's why you're not seeing continuous recording on this timeline. Now, this is where Tapo starts getting a little weird and I wish they would do better. Just like on the live feed, I can take a snapshot of what I have here. But in order to download 
any one of these things here. That is me. So here, we'll, we'll go to the bird. If I wanted to download this bird to show it to somebody, I have to select the record button and record the clip from here. Oh, it flew off. Okay, I select I'm done. That now saves to the My Memories area, which is over here. This was just playback, and it's from the My Memories area that I can actually download one of these clips. Notice there's no way that I could press and hold to do anything. It will only start playing it. I can't download it from here. However, I can if I select there, filter for specific types, which is nice. So if you've got a lot of clips, you had motion and person turned on, but you just wanted person, you could filter it up there. Just like we had on the live feed, we can toggle the microphone and make this big screen. Now, coming over to our memories. These memories didn't exist before, except when I was doing the demonstration for you. I took two snapshots. I took two videos. If I select my video, well, now I have the ability to share it, favorite it, download it, delete it. I really wish Tapo would change this portion of the app because it makes getting those clips much more tedious, especially since we have them saved on an SD card. It's not in the cloud. Make it easier for me to be able to get to them. That's all I'm asking. But that is everything that we have for our camera controls. Now we move up to camera configuration. So selecting the sprocket there allows us to now start making modifications to this camera. Selecting this icon up here will allow you to change the name and we'll show you the MAC address and firmware information for the camera. Coming down, location, you've got a couple of presets but I can select custom and then type in my own. Coming back, we have our time zone. Another location for the Tapo Care free trial right there. You can see 30 days, you get that standard with any Tapo camera. Here we have our battery status. Right there, it's showing 80%. Use days, it's showing you, hey, less than a day. Total detected events, in my case, 111. And then show on live view, meaning that battery icon. I strongly recommend having that because it'll help you kind of figure out, maybe I shouldn't be staring through this as much as I am because I'm using up a lot of battery. We have power saver mode. So right now, it's always off. You have auto and always on. What power saver mode does is automatically change some of the settings to minimize power consumption. So for me, having always off, I want the maximum amount of detection for the camera rather than preserving the battery life. And for me, that's worked fairly well. Here we have invert image. Turning this on or off will swap the video to be upside down if you're mounting this upside down. LED status light is a nice feature to have, especially if you have this mounted where there's people and the LED status light will let people know if the camera's actually being looked at. Privacy zones is a great feature that Tapo has. If I select this, here I could see my backyard. Well, let's say there's a specific area in my backyard, like these houses here, and I have this little adjustable box, and I'm gonna throw that right there, and I put check mark. Now, that particular area, whether it's in the live feed or in my recordings, will be blacked out. I can't see it, the camera can't see it. If I come back here, we can add multiple privacy zones. So we can have quite quite the number of them, as you can see, four to be exact. Night mode settings, selecting this, well, here we go. We've got black and white mode, meaning it's going to use the IR lights instead of the LEDs. If we select color, that's going to use the LEDs. That will give us a bit of a color night vision. Or we have smart mode. So it will automatically switch from black and white to color when an event is detected based on power consumption, blah, blah, blah. So instead of seeing black and white, if it detects a person, it will change over to color. So we're going to leave it on that option for now and come down. Spotlight brightness, kind of a running tally here as to how bright it is. This will not be as helpful as I'm doing this in the daytime, but if you wanted to see how bright it was, you could toggle that and go boop, 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 but uh, I'm just gonna max that out and leave it as is, and we're gonna come back. Detections and alerts, well, right here, I have motion turned off, but if I turn that on, any motion that happens within the frame of this will send me a notification and trigger an event. Right here you see this orange haze. Well, this is actually a detection box. So if I only cared about this small portion right there for the detection of all motion, I can kind of set that. I could also have several zones, again, four to be exact, and say I only want this side, this side, and the blank space in the middle. I can do that. I'm going to save and we're gonna come back and turn off motion because I want AI detection. I want to be notified if it detects a person. So you can toggle that on and off and then slider scale for sensitivity. Same thing with pet, on or off, sensitivity scale, and then vehicle, on or off, and sensitivity scale. Since this is in my backyard, I do not have any cars that are going to be driving through my backyard, but that's all under our AI detection. I am greatly appreciative that that is actually a free feature in the Tapo lineup. Here we have the wake sensitivity. So notice this is how far out it will project in order to wake up the camera. You can see it's showing you right there 
how close something has to be before that PIR sensor activates. And then the further out it goes, obviously the more battery it will consume because more things are, are more likely to set it off. Here we have activity notification. I do have that turned on. If you want rich notification, if I try and toggle that, it's gonna bring me to the tap OK. We're gonna go back. So send me a notification all the time, during the daytime, during the nighttime, or custom range. This is a nice feature to have so you can kind of customize when you want to be notified if something's happening. In my case, I want it all the time. And then here we have camera alarm. If I toggle the alarm, turn it on, one, I could select alarm type. So do I want sound, light, or do I want both? Ideally you want both. Really freak somebody out. Alarm sound, selecting this, well, you've got siren or tone, as well as a volume level low to high. Just like before, you can schedule all the time, during the night only, during the day only, during the night only, and then a custom time. Selecting customize will let you see right here, if I select this, I could pick days and I could pick time. We're gonna come back. That was all under our detection settings. Now we're gonna come to our micro SD card. Right here, the micro SD card is set for loop. This device is actually talking to the hub, which you saw already. Loop recording means the oldest recording as I run out of space will get overridden. I can clear all recordings and I can format right from here. Either one of those will remove everything from the SD card, so do not use that unless you really want to. Here we have clip settings coming in here. How short amount of time do you want before the next event triggers? So right here, by default, it's five seconds. I can go zero, keep going, 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 and it will slide all the way up to 60 seconds in between each clip. So we're gonna put that back to what it was default, and then record buffer. When motion is no longer detected, how long will the camera keep recording? So in this case, default is six seconds. You have a maximum of 10 seconds, and then three seconds. We're gonna put this back to about eight seconds, because that's kind of what I like. Here we have maximum clip length, selecting this, you can see it's in seconds, so you have no choice there, but you can go all the way up to 120 seconds. And for me, I am going to drop this to 60, so we'll say it's about a minute, and then select back. Next, we come down to video quality, selecting this. As you saw before, we have the ability for 2K HD or 720p data saving. 720 is still considered HD, so just know that. Or you can leave it on auto and it will dynamically switch between the two based on connection level, data speeds, things of that nature. Moving on, we have advanced settings. Coming into advanced settings, well, here's another place where we can access privacy mode. We have our record audio. Some areas will not allow you to record audio with your video. This is how you can toggle that on and off depending on where you live. Power line frequency. You have a choice between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. If you don't know what that is, don't go in there and play with that. Leave it on its default. But if you do, that's where you can find it. Here we have our frame rate. What frame rate do you want for this camera? Higher frame rate reduces battery life. By default, it is set for 15, which is generally what you're gonna get with outdoor battery cameras, but you can set it for 20 frames per second if you'd like. Voice call mode, you have standard and compatibility mode. Compatibility mode will kind of dynamically lower some of your settings so that it maintains a stable connection when you're doing a video call. Here we have display settings. Right here we have hardware acceleration, which improves performance. Compatibility mode optimizes things to kind of give you better battery life. On screen displays right here, well, you've got your timestamp, and then right there is your timestamp settings. You have display text. Well, this is something I really like because if you wanted to have as part of the video file itself, specific text saying, hey, this was the garage, or this is the front studio, you can have that display text right on your video itself. And then you've got the Tapo logo, and those were our on-screen settings. We're coming back. Here we have auto privacy mode, enable privacy mode when charging. So turning that on is a great feature because if you have to bring the camera in to charge and you're not using the battery pass-through, this means that while it's charging in your home, cameras will turn themselves off. That is a great feature that I think more cameras really should have. Connected hub, well, this is gonna show you signal strength, the hub type, and how it's connected or how the hub is connected. Now we have our user manual. Not gonna go through that, self-explanatory. Mounting guide, we'll show you how to mount this, but that's done during setup. Share device will allow you to share this individual device with another user. They will need to have their own TAPO account in order to be able to access it through the TAPO application. And here we have our feedback that will allow you to send feedback to TAPO about any problems you might be having or good things that you've experienced with your camera. The last option on this page is remove the camera. If I wish to remove the camera from my TAPO application, that is how I would do that. And that has been everything that we can do for the C420S. If we come back, quickly run through the overall TAPO application. Home is going to list out all of your smart devices, and in this case, it's mostly cameras for me. Cameras will segregate out only the cameras, and you can see I have quite a few. Uh, 
showing you an easy access point for all of them. Also, a quick way to turn them into home mode or away mode. Next, we have vacuum cleaner. Well, if I had any vacuums, they would show up on this page. Think of the home page as your favorite. You can kind of have as many things as you want on here of differing types, but these will allow you to break them down into their individual components. And always in the upper right-hand corner is plus sign so that you know you can add something right from there. Next, we have the actions and routines. Here's our go to bed. It will allow you to set up a routine for when you go to bed. You tap it, it turns things off. Shortcuts, well, if you want to add a shortcut to something, this is where you can do it. And then we have automations. You want to set up an automation like XY triggers this to do this. This is the location for that. And then me is going to have your account information and also a singular place where you can update all the firmware for all the cameras in one single location. But that has been everything that you could do for the Tapo C420S using the Tapo app. There you saw, there was a ridiculous ridiculous amount of customization and features that you could access for free using the app for the C420S here. I stand by Tapo being one of the most feature rich applications that you have access to that doesn't beat you over the head with a monetization model. There are a few things that I would like to not have to pay for, but it does not break the functionality of the camera. And that's saying something. We have looked at the overall hardware, the application. You're getting the camera because it's a camera. It has video and audio. You want to know how this sounds? Let's take a listen to what the audio from the camera sounds like. Twelve inches away. Camera about this far away. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three, and test. And I'm going to walk backwards and see if it'll pick me up as I walk further away. Ideally, it probably won't pick me up from this far. Maybe it'll pick up that sound over there. I don't know. The audio from the camera itself is one place where this camera in particular falls short. It is almost unusable audio from the application to the camera so that somebody could hear you. In reverse, using the microphone to listen to on the app, yes, it's a little more serviceable, but I think just the size of the speaker, it's, it's not going to be the selling point of this camera. If you're looking for audio, that is not the strong point of this camera. Video, it does glorious 2K HDR video. However, because I don't want to downscale this 1080 video, up there in the corner I have a link to a separate video that shows video samples from this in its 2K glory. Night, day, some rain, go check that out after you're done with this review. I can say that the colored night vision with the starlight sensor, pretty much until it gets to complete darkness, you'll be able to see color night vision. And then once you actually get to a dark point, you have either the LEDs or the IRs, depending on what type of night vision you'd like to utilize. As far as video quality goes, you get a very sharp picture regardless of lighting. For those that utilize voice assistance, C420S2 is compatible with both Alexa and Google Home, should you have those devices. So I've talked a lot about the strong points and the overall specs of this camera. Are there cons? There are a few in my opinion. First being, this camera had some connectivity issue in where I normally place my cameras for testing, which is about 50 feet away from my access point. Now again, this could be remedied if I had set this to Wi-Fi mode and moved it closer to the camera, but I wanted to keep the hub close to my access point to test it that way. So I did have to move the camera a little closer to my house in order to get a stable connection, especially for those 2K videos. So just keep in mind, if you have this relatively close to your house or the base station, your signal will be fine. If you start moving further away, as the two talk to each other, you might run into some stability issues. And I do not have a slouch of a Wi-Fi access point, as you can see over there in the corner. We talked about the weak sound from this, and part of me thinks that that's because even though the camera itself is relatively big, if you look at it, you're pretty much like only this portion is for the camera. The rest is for the weatherproofing and the battery. So that's going to give you a small space for the speaker as well as the Wi-Fi antennas. Now, since we're back here and talking about the battery, I do wish that because they offered a 
pass through that I did not necessarily need to use the battery to act as the intermediary because that's what has the plug. There's no extra plug in here that I can just say, hey, maybe I don't want to use the battery and then pass it right through to the camera. I do realize that this is a battery powered camera first, but because it has that pass through door, I kind of wish that they gave us the option. I have heard that the pass through and battery like design like this is because there's going to be a solar panel peripheral that comes out later for this. So if that's the case, I can kind of see it then. One other thing with the battery itself, this one, not so much because I can do that. Other camera that I have, the battery just does not sit as firmly as I would like. And there have been one or two instances where the temperature change has happened fairly drastically because we're having like 20 to 30 degree temperature changes where I'm at. And sometimes the battery might just a little bit loose and I have to pop it open and send it back home. Again, these are merely data points for you. And if you're looking at this camera, you're gonna to wanna to know some of the shortcomings. And those are the few shortcomings that I encountered while I was testing. Just like you get with any other Tapo camera, you get a lot of functionality for free without needing to pay a monthly subscription. And I really like that about Tapo cameras. The hub means that your clips are always going to be safe regardless of if the camera gets stolen, broken, or reset. Looking at other manufacturers that have a problem with that. The fact that it is a battery operated camera and the batteries are interchangeable or swappable means that you don't have to worry about finding direct sunlight to charge an internal solar battery because you could just grab and go as needed. Because of that, even with the poor audio quality, as long as audio is not the first and foremost thing on your mind, I think the Tapo C422 could be a great addition to your smart home or for those that are just starting out, an easy way to get started with a smart home because hey, a battery camera takes a lot less to place than having one that has power cable or needs sun to stay continuously charged. If you can overlook the small issue that the camera has, I recommend checking it out. With that being said, I have been Wanderer 001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.